What is going on guys, Rewinds here, and in this video I'm going to be bringing you guys some major spoilers for Borto to Blue Vortex chapter number 11. So, we are getting these extremely late this month. I was honestly unsure if we were even going to get spoilers at this point because usually when a chapter drops on the 20th, we usually get spoilers, you know, around the 16th or the 17th, but this time... We actually have spoilers dropping on the 19th, just a day before. So, that's kind of crazy. I haven't seen that before in my span of covering these, so this is kind of rare. But, nonetheless, we do have spoilers. We pretty much got the main points of the full chapter, so pretty much full spoilers. And, um, shout out to the Boruto 2 Blue Vortex page over here that I'm following for these translations. So, um, mostly we have these bullet points of what's going on in the chapter rather than leaked panels itself. So that's pretty much what this is going to be. So if you want to hear what happened story-wise, that's what this video is going to include a lot of. Um, panels, sadly, we don't have any as of right now. And I honestly don't think we're going to get any to leak anytime soon. Maybe, you know, closer to the chapter, maybe a couple hours before they drop. Um, but... Nothing as of right now. We did have a sneak peek um, page release just yesterday, I want to say. And um, I didn't cover that, but I'll show you guys that as well towards the end of the video. But let's talk about what's going on over here. So, Borto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 11 is titled Serious. I also want to say that this is... Um, you know, my first time reading these, so I'm going to react to it a little bit as I go as well. So, um, let's see what's going on. So, it starts off by saying, Himawari has super regenerative powers thanks to the Nine Tails. Um, she healed Inojin's wound with that power as well. So, that confirms one thing right there. Inojin is not dead. So... That is a big thing um, that a lot of people were wondering about. A lot of people were saying, like, damn, they killed Inojin off last chapter. This sucks. I didn't like the buildup. Or, you know, some people just thought it was crazy and didn't really mind to death. But I did see some people were upset about it. And, well, for the ones that were upset about it, here you guys go. Inojin is healed. And it seems like it won't be a problem. He should be back. So... It says she asked Shikadai to let her keep fighting alone to confirm the reason why Jura is after her. Shikadai agreed with Himawari because he knew that they don't stand a chance against Jura and it's better to survive in this fight. Jura compliments him for this wise decision and said he won't forget his name because they'll meet again someday. That could be some foreshadowing of another instance, you know, when they encounter him and maybe next time Shikadai will be a little more prepared, maybe a little bit stronger. Um, I still don't know how he'd match up against Jura scale-wise, but um, maybe he'll come up with some sort of like crazy tactical plan to take him out. Chocho disagreed with this decision, but Himawari assures her that she got the same thought at first, but because she got this power, so she has responsibilities now to fulfill. So Himawari is really embracing having this Ninetales power right now, and um, that's pretty mature of her because Himawari is, you know, I'm pretty sure 12 at this point. So, pretty mature decision right there. Chocho ends up accepting her decision and asks to be treated with pancakes after all of this is over. So, you know, pretty in character of Chocho. Um, going forward, we have Jura admitting that those people aren't stupid but wonders why they have a bad decision. He said Inojin endangered himself even after Jura warned him, while at the same time, it awakens something inside Himawari. He wonders if this is a coincidence or if there's a correlation. So, you know, these kinds of instances seem like they're developing Jura as a character as well because Jura is kind of learning things slowly of how the world of, you know, humans works. So, um, he's kind of starting to slowly get some things, I guess, that um, could be connected, I guess, between people. Like, for example, the bonds over here, whereas Himawari had a rage awakening, in a sense, to Inojin's potential death. So then Himawari and Jura fought, and they both fired a tail beast bomb. This was actually a page that 
we did get a sneak peek panel for her, so I'm sure most of you guys caught that, but um, that was what they did for the sneak peek this month. After that, it says Jura is curious how she can use this beast bomb and how rapid her evolution is. And honestly, that is pretty crazy because I've seen some people talk about that as well, that it's pretty crazy how quick Himawari can use some of these things like the tail beast bomb. I know I saw some comments about that when the whole, you know, leak happened of that, uh, not the leak happened, the sneak peek released. So, um, I feel like it has to do with a couple things. For example, Himawari has already befriended, um, Kurama. That helps a lot, of course, because she didn't have to go through the whole thing how Naruto had to dealing with, you know, a hateful Kurama and going through that whole process of befriending him. So it's honestly, in a way, thanks to Naruto because um, it made it easier for Himawari, in a sense, to connect since Kurama is not full of hate anymore. And um, that aside, uh, Himawari also has a better affinity for... Kurama that was also stated in the last chapter as well so that I'm sure also plays a role so her potential seems to be a lot higher with some of the techniques that will be used probably by her so that's kind of how I see it so um next thing is pretty much we have Jura headbutting her and kicking her saying this is the first time that he understood things and it made him want to start going all out slash serious. And that leads to the chapter title. So pretty much this could be relating to Jura getting serious in this fight. Where back to the Hidden Leaf, uh, Sarda and others have uh, cornered Hidari. And she asked Hidari why he can use Chidori. So now it seems like she might make that connection between Sasuke and Hidari this chapter. At least that's where I think they're getting at. Hidari ends up asking if the eye she used before is the Sharingan and if the Chidori is the name of the move he used earlier. He said the move is quite hard to use. He needs Sharingan to completely master it. So um, that seems to be the big flaw for Hidari right now. The no Sharingan is hurting his ability to use the Chidori. So maybe that's going to be something that happens a little bit down the line in the story. Konohamaru apparently inter interrogated him about this with what his relation was with Sasuke as well. And Hidari says he doesn't know who he is and that he just came to the village to find out more about himself. So, I mean, kind of truthful answer from Hidari. Um... And uh, good by Konohamaru to get some answers out of him. Next, uh, Sumire warns Konohamaru to protect Sarada because she realized that Hidari's main target is Sarada. Jura then used claws to shock Sarada. And some ninja tried to help Sarada but got burned with the fire element from Hidari. So this kind of sounds like maybe um, a sneak attack happened. And I think this is a mistranslation. I think they meant Hidari used claws to shock Sarada, not Jura. But um, it uh, it seems like some shinobi came in and, you know, they got killed off by him. Then after that, Konohamaru charged at him and attacked with the Rasengan, but Hidari teleported behind him. And, you know, I'm really, really glad about this next part coming up it's because I'm reading ahead. And... It says Konohamaru actually used a new move to protect him from Hidari's Chidori. This move name is Futon Rusen Shoeki. And I probably said that way wrong. But it translates to Wind Element Spiraling Barrier. And I'm just really glad he did that because, I mean, come on guys. We've had a time skip here. Everybody's getting stronger. He's a character that if... He's going to really become the next Hokage down the line. We need to keep seeing some improvement. So I'm glad, you know, he's not losing so easily to um, this opponent. Because Hidari is no joke, you know, as an opponent. And I know Konohamaru fought some pretty tough opponents in Part 1 of Boruto. But, um, you know, they got to be riding him better to make it out of these instances. You know, either at least less scathed or winning some of these instances. So 
at least in this case, you know, he showed he can counter a Chidori, which is pretty big. So, um, moving forward. Also, I'm pretty interested, too, to see what this um, barrier move of his looks like, too. That could look pretty cool. Um, next thing is Hidari attacks Sumire with lightning, and that made her unconscious. Sarda is now in a pinch. Same thing happened to Himawari. So, she got hit, but her wound healed. Jura praised her that her regenerative powers beyond Jinchuriki and much more closer to Tail Beast. But even so, she became weakened because it needs tremendous chakra to heal such a wound. So it seems like Himawari is on the ropes right here. You know, she's demonstrating a lot of big power, but it just doesn't seem to be enough in this instance at the moment, um, which makes sense. We, I'm pretty sure a lot of us wanted to see some cool stuff from Himawari in this chapter, but... Um, I don't really think scaling wise it makes sense for Himawari to beat Jura, you know, or be putting up an even fight, uh, especially with her first time using this power, you know. So, um, good writing on that, and uh, let's see what happens next. So, um, the Chibi Ninetales commented that even with such high potential, Himawari and I mean, Himawari had. It still doesn't stand a chance against Jura's power. She says that um, she really did have a bad opponent. So, um, more praise to Jura's power over here. Scenery changed now to Delta and Kawaki flying in the sky. Del Delta asked Kawaki what... Um, sorry, I lost track. Where was it? Delta keeps asking him if he went there to the scene what he can do. So, that's kind of where we're at. And um, Delta pretty much was asking him, what will Kawaki do to the people who beat um, Kawaki before, such as Jura and Hidari? So, um, yeah, Kawaki responds by saying he's going to keep going after them. Suddenly, Borto actually flies past them. He went in saving Himawari. Back to Hidari, and Hidari says he didn't know about himself, but somehow the only thing he knew was Sarada from the first place, so he asked who exactly Sarada is. He unders what he will gain if he devours her. Sarda has noticed a frog holding some kind of paper watch from a pole behind Hidari. Borto's frog confirmed that the frog has arrived to Sarda's place and said the symbol will be square. Borto then used the flying god technique and Borto teleported just behind Hidari, then cut his hand that held Sarda. And Jura commented, what a tiresome trick. Hidari commented, Otsutsuki Boruto and that's how the chapter ends so all in all it seems like in this chapter you know we're getting a lot of the side characters making a stand and of course power scaling wise they don't really stand much of a chance sadly but um, they did get some cool little moments and showcases here it seems like in this chapter and got some answers as well Meanwhile, that gave just enough time for Kawaki to start rushing to the scene, um, which he hasn't gotten there yet, but probably will in the next chapter. But Boruto, really showing out, pops up in front of both opponents at the end. And um, I'm pretty sure he did this through Shadow Clones, I would assume. So um, he teleported with the frog technique, um, well, with the Flying God technique, using the, fro using the frogs as like the area to teleport. So um, pretty cool there. And uh, definitely an exciting setup for the next chapter. So um, it'll be interesting to see what chapter 12 holds. But overall, chapter 11 sounds like a solid chapter. Seems like we got a lot of action in this chapter. Some, you know, character moments for Jura and Hidari as well. And um, cool little moment for sure for Konohamaru with his little defense. As well as some good stuff from Himawari this chapter. So overall, um, I like what I'm reading. Hopefully when the actual full chapter comes out, you know, stuff is looking pretty good as well. But um, that's what I think about this end on the spoilers. Here is that sneak peek image, by the way, if you guys were wondering of what's going on in the chapter. This was Konohamaru versus Hidari over here. This is that scene of him charging in with the Rasengan. And then he misses, you know, with the teleportation Hidari does. And it seems like Hidari is about to hit him with the Chidori. And that's pretty much all they showed on that page. But um, looks pretty cool nonetheless. Um, there are like sometimes certain like pages where I feel like I wish Borto, you know, would kind of draw like some different angles and stuff for, for the fights. I've you know I've seen some people talking about that as well. But 
Um, this one kind of reminds me of that, particularly with if you look at um, how the Chidori is being used. Um, but, you know, I guess it makes sense, and I'm not going to really judge yet until we see the full chapter, so I'm going to wait on that. But that's the sneak peek. Um, and then someone got burnt, someone uh, that could be a random shinobi, or it could even be Nishi, um, which, you know, we've seen him pop up a little bit in some of the earlier chapters in part one. So, um, that's pretty much going to be it, though, for the full spoilers this time around. I think, uh, if there's anything else, I'll probably just talk about it in my review, but I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think of all these spoilers, so let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap up this one. If you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you guys are new. And as always, I hope you guys have a good day or night whenever you guys are watching this video. I'm Rewinds, and I'm out.